It's a privilege for me to be here today. There's folks in the... Hey there. Hey, Johnsons. Good to see you. Um, there's folks that have known me for almost all my life that are here. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, I believe God has ordained a, a tremendous friendship with your pastor, and I'm really looking forward to see what God's going to do with that. I was recently in... Um, Guadalajara, Mexico, speaking to some students in uh, high school, college age, and I asked them the question, can a non-Christian fight Satan and win? And so what would your answer be to that? No. No. So then I asked the question, who should fight for them? And I was taken by the answer because I was surprised. They said, God. I was like, well, okay, that could be. But I think he's been really clear that he has all the authority in heaven and on earth, therefore he sent us. So we are to fight for them. It's my responsibility to fight for them. It's your responsibility to fight for them. And so I was taken by the testimony that Quran shared with you. I've heard it before, and, and this week as we were speaking about being here this morning, it hit me all of a sudden. Did you hear him say that he was mad at God? You see, when, when we expect God to do what he's asked us to do, then all of a sudden we allow people or we cause people to be angry at God because here they are looking at God, asking Him to defend them, asking Him to do something for them, and He's not the one that's going to do it. It's going to be me. It's going to be us. So I kind of prepped Quran for this, but I want to ask you to come here. So right here before this these folks that hardly know us. Don't do this. No, you you got to look at me. I care. I want to ask you to forgive me for not being there. You know, my mom used to live real close on Crowley and 20 and 35 right there. And you, we talked about it yesterday, showed me where you lived. It wasn't but 20 minutes away. And I must have driven past where you lived. And I want to tell you I'm so sorry that I didn't do anything to keep you from being mad at God. So would you forgive me? Yes, my friend. Yes. Yeah, thank my you. Friend. <laughs> trying to make a black guy cry in this church. <laughs> You see, what God did in my life when Deborah and I and our children decided to go to Argentina to be missionaries was that he showed me violence. He showed me violence in stadiums. And, of course, I'd coached college soccer for 10 years, and one of my former players, Derek Hicks, is here, and, and uh, it's been awesome to, to stay in touch with him. And that's kind of how, through Steve Beck also, that I ended up in the Emirates with him. But... Um, in Argentina, God showed me how people would go to a stadium, much like they do here in Arlington. But their fans cannot mix. Fans have to be uh, ushered in by police, and fans of one team have to come in from one end, and fans from the other team have to come in from a different side. And, and if they ever collide, and sometimes they do this on purpose, and the police do it because it's a corrupt situation, and and they allow these fans to mix, and of course people die in the process. You know, you can be arrested for inciting violence if you're with the wrong shirt in the wrong place. Because that's what happens when they don't look at your face anymore, they just look at the color of your shirt. And if it's not the right color, you could die. Well, one of the problems we have in Argentina, and I think it's probably happening in Texas, is that Christians become so much a fanatic of a team and a sport that they go to a stadium not 
as a Christian fan, they go as a fan that is a Christian. And there's a huge difference there. So what God began to do in my heart was to give me this righteous indignation, this, this sense of, of things are wrong and no one's doing anything about it. The church was silent. I remember asking a pastor if he was praying for the salvation of the national team. And because if we love him so much and cheer for him so, so well, why wouldn't we want him to be in heaven with us? I remember his reaction was to flip over and, and I never got to speak to him anymore that night because he didn't, we, we just turned different directions. And so the rejection of the concept of confessing my idolatry towards things that are not Jesus, that, that, that try to take his place, all of a sudden were difficult. And so this righteous indignation began to work in my heart and, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to do, Lord? How is it I'm supposed to do something about this grave problem of people dying at an athletic and sporting event? And he says, well, do you believe I can do something about it? And I sheepishly said, yes, I, I do. And then I began to go to the stadiums all by myself because at the time I was the only nuthead uh, that, that, that felt like something could be done. And so, and so I'd walk around the stadium, 60, 70,000 people, and I would make my way and walk around them just prayer walking and saying, God, please protect everybody here. Lord, please help everyone get home safely. And then I, as I spoke and I began to share, God began to add other crazy people to, to the mix. And, and then we began to go to, to the places together. And then what happened was we, we began to so just follow the Lord in, in His leading in this movement today that's no more violence, a message from God. And this phrase that you see, my life for your victory, is what's translated into what my life is all about, my purpose. You see, when, when in Scripture we read, for I no longer live, but it's Christ who lives in me, it, it speaks about my denying to myself. I have to say no to the things that I want, the things that, that move me, the things that, that I'm wired to want to do can never take precedence over my commitment and loyalty to Jesus Christ. He's the one. He's the purpose. He, it's all about Him. And so God began to develop this ministry and, and we're in our, celebrating our 20th year next year. And... I want to share with you this morning some of the principles about that. One of them is uh, fishing, or if you will, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Well, if you're real practical about that, schools and stadiums are always full of fish. Uh, Derek was telling me that yesterday he went fishing and as soon as he put it in, the hook didn't even get it, he was pulling one out. Well, when you're going to go fishing, and I'm not an avid fisherman, I've been told by those who do fish, any fishermen here? People? Yeah? Um, I've been told that there's never a bad day fishing, even if you don't catch anything. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. It's never a bad day fishing, never a bad day to say, hey, do you know who Jesus is? There's never a bad day to do that, even if they reject you. It's never bad to, to share your faith. It's never a bad time. Stadiums and schools are full of fish, but how do you get in? Well, God began to show us how. And, and I've got several pictures that we can look at. And, and what had to happen in our, in our lives is, go ahead and put those pictures up. We, we had to go to where the problems were. We had to go, go ahead and keep just rolling through. And God began to show us that if we were to get out there all of a sudden, and put ourselves in the place of the uh, violence, in the place where violence occurs, uh, and we prayed and asked God to help us, then He would give us access. He would allow us to get in, and He would, he would open the doors for us. And so here we are at the biggest game in the country, and, and it's Christian young people occupying center field and, and playing praying to God for the well-being of His people, showing a message that simply says, no more violence, a message from God. And so the idea is to just go into all the places where there are people. We operate sometimes thinking that there are places that we cannot go. 
And it's taken me back to what many in Argentina, I learned to call it that there, call the great omission. If I were to ask you what does the Great Commission say, you would say what? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. But you know that's not where it starts. You did the great omission. What does verse 18 say? Verse 18 says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, therefore go. But see, we often say, we forget verse 18, and we say, so Jesus says, go. And we're like, I, I, don't, I don't know anything. I can't do that. How am I supposed to? They said no. The, the, the principal at the school said, I can't. The, the ministry of education said, no. The government said, we can't. The law says, and so I'm reminded of verse 18. Verse 18 says what? All authority. How much is all? Is there any lacking? It's everything. He has all the authority in heaven and on earth, and in that authority is what He has sent us to go and do. So when we encounter a wall, we, my friend Dario and I, he says I taught it to him. He said, I say he, he taught it to me. But we look at a wall and we say, see the wall? And others say yes, and say, well, we don't. Have you ever run into a wall? In Jesus' authority, you can walk through the wall. The gates of hell won't prevail against you. You can walk on through. You can get on through. But see, the violence, if we go back to what, what took place right here and saying, Quran, I'm sorry, is that we have said, God, no, it's your job. Well, you know, we can't. Sorry, Lord, we, we just can't. And he's continually reminding me, yes, you can. I have all the authority. He's continually inviting us to play on his playing field where everything is possible. And we keep asking him to come bless our life in a world that's impossible. And I believe in my heart, with all my heart, that he wants each one of us to live under his authority where everything is possible, where no's turn into yeses, and where governments don't understand why, but they say, please come in. For example, after all these years in Argentina, do you know they passed a law that the work, that the material that's used in public schools has to be taught in the public school system in Argentina. Isn't that crazy? It's a Catholic nation saying a law that the materials from evangelical churches needs to be taught in our public schools. Amen. As here, they're being rejected and we're told no. There, they're writing laws that say yes. He has all the authority. We don't, we don't live in a, in, a, in a time, we've never lived in a time where, where we couldn't. We've always lived in a time where we can. And I just want to remind us of that this morning. That in Christ and His authority, yes, we can. We can advance against whatever it is out there that's saying no. Yes, we can. Because who has all the authority? Jesus Christ. You know, I asked a question of the young people in, in Guadalajara. I said, and let's do this, let's do this together. I said, how much is two plus two? Four. Let's do it again. If you're sure of the answer, you can, you can be sure of your answer and speak it loud. If you're not, then we need to go back to school. But let's do it again. How much is two plus two? Four. Okay. Now, watch what's going to happen when I ask this next question. Who has all the authority? You notice there's a little bit of, of course I prepped you for this, right? So you knew that you had to answer louder Jesus than you did for, right? But typically, we're really sure of certain things, and then when it comes to spiritual things, we're like, eh, well, I'm not sure. And what I want us to be convinced of today is that Jesus has all the authority. Amen. And therefore, we can go. We can go into troubled places. We can go and we can stand in a violent place. We can, we can do this. Why? Because Jesus has all the authority. There's a story in Scripture in Luke where Jesus heals a paralytic. Do you remember the story? It's real simple. These people, these friends of this paralyzed man believed that Jesus could heal. They believed it so firmly that they picked him up and I... I I've, imagine that he's like, man, what are you doing? 
come on, what? leave me alone. No, no, no. Jesus can do this. Jesus can heal you. Jesus can, can set this right. Let's take you to him. And so they, they pick him up and they go and they, they bust through the ceiling because they can't get to him. And do you remember what Jesus said? He said, because of their faith, your sins are forgiven. And so as we think of fishing, it has to be coupled with faith. Because we can go to places, we can go to schools, and we can go to stadiums, and and we can feel, oh my goodness, there are so many people. How in the world are we going to do this? But if we have faith sufficient that, that, that we don't need much, right? It's just the smallest seed that is, right? It, we don't need much. Sometimes the problem's not of faith. It's about putting the faith into action. But see, faith, if we had the faith to believe, then perhaps Jesus would say, because of your faith, Arlington sins are forgiven. Because of your faith, the United States sins are forgiven. Because of your faith. Because of your faith. How much faith do we have that things can change as elections come close and, and we're getting in all this crazy stuff going on in our nation and in the world? How much faith do we have? Do we really believe that Jesus has all the authority? Or, well, you know, maybe Jesus is taking a nap. Maybe he is asleep on on board the boat and the storm's raging and all this. And do you remember when he he woke up, he goes, what's the matter with you? Where's your faith? So as things are difficult, I want to encourage, encourage us that we need to go into all the world, stadiums, schools, community centers, communities, not bypass communities, not drive past them. But we need to go there. And we need to allow the authority that Jesus Christ has in heaven and on earth change things. First, He changed me. He's changed you and He's changing us together because we're here today. He's molding and making us into who He wants us to be, to, have, to be more like Jesus Christ. And so as we think of this, is there anything Jesus cannot do? It's real simple, right? But in our daily, day-to-day activities, we run into those walls. We run into those barriers, and all of a sudden we put it all into question. And so all I'm here to do this morning is just say, hey, we can stop this. We can, in the power and authority of Jesus Christ, make things happen. In Argentina, we began by training churches how to go do this, that we had just learned. God had just taught us, and so then we thought we knew something, and all we really knew was what we just had learned. And so what we learned was when we go to stadiums, uh, we, we'd see the mass of people, we'd see you'd have to understand it's, it's kind of like stampedes of people trying to get in whether they have a ticket or not. They're really trying to bust through the gates so that <laughs> so they can get in whether they have a ticket or not. And some of the biggest games, uh, people are trampled and, and it's mass chaos. Well, we trained a young uh, church because and, and, what we do is train churches to adopt a school or to, do, to adopt a stadium in, in their city, in their, in their community. And so we trained this group, and there was a small group of volunteers that day, and they were going to hand out flyers, and they were going to just pray. Well, they saw a gang coming. Gangs in Argentina are associated with teams, not neighborhoods. And so they, as they came, they, uh, one of the volunteers said to the leader, hey, look, they're coming. What do we do? And, and some of them wanted to go hand them flyers, and the leader said, no, no, we just need to gather and pray. So they began to pray, and they began to ask God to please not allow anything violent to happen. And so you know what? Nothing happened. Two days later, this, this gang member ran into one of the young ladies, and you saw in the pictures they have a black T-shirt on that says, No More Violence on the front. On the back it says a message from God. And so as 
she, this young man approached her and said, hey, you were at the stadium the other day. Uh, yeah. So? He said, well, what did you do? I, I don't understand. What do you mean, what did we do? Well, we were trying to cause violence. We were there to tear up things. We had our chains and, and thing. We were going we to wreck the place. But, but we got two blocks away, and we kept trying to get closer, and, and, and we kept trying to advance, but something kept us from being able to get closer. We, 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 couldn't, we couldn't go, so we just dropped everything and went home. What did you do? So, well, we just asked God for nothing to happen. We just asked God to protect everybody and, and for not to be violent. And so he was affected by that. And, and then before they ended the conversation, he says, I have one last question. He said, uh, who are all those people dressed in white standing around you? You see, when Jesus has all the authority, we can go into tough places. We don't have to worry about me. You don't have to worry about yourself because we have already begun to live our eternity if we've given our lives to Christ. We will not taste death, right? Oh, death, where is your sting? We're, we're already there. We, we, we don't have to worry about us. But we do need to live our life fighting for them because they can't fight Satan and win. We have to do that. But if we're trying to hold on to what we have here, if we're trying to hold on to our life that we've given to Christ, for I no longer live, but it's Christ who lives in me, greater love hath no man than this, and he who would lay down his life for his friend. Are we willing to do that? Are we sincerely ready to say, God, you can have it. I really want to see things change I want to be about change. I want to be about transformation. You see, if we have faith in the authority of Christ, we will have influence that leads to transformation. But if we doubt our faith and we don't understand that He has all the authority, then our influence is minimal because it depends on how well educated I am and how many accolades I have, or how many titles, or how much prep, or, or how much wealth, or whatever, depends on me and my qualifications. But if, if, if we have faith that He has all the authority, and He has sent me, then I go there with influence, and transformation begins to take place right before our eyes. I don't know about you, but it is awesome to see things happen right before your eyes. At stadiums, we look at where the violence is about to occur, and I know this is crazy because there's very little violence going on in stadiums in the United States, right? You've got to go into college football maybe to find some problems, and, and they're minimal. People do die, at, unfortunately, but it's not at the scale at other places. But things can change. We see the violence about to happen, and all we do is this, I promise you, we look to see where the eruption's about to take place, and we just migrate there. And even though God is omnipresent, when we walk there in His name, all of a sudden His presence is there, and the presence of God changes things. It's pretty amazing. And you get to see it and feel it and how the climate, the spiritual climate changes because it's a very oppressive place. It's a very spiritually oppressed condition that all of a sudden as you move there, the presence of God moves with you and all of a sudden, whew, I think, Will, you spoke of that breeze, right? Oh, in a place where violence is king, when that spirit ushers in, that breeze Oh, I guarantee you, you sense it and you know who has the authority. You have no doubt. We do have violence in schools in the United States, don't we? Unfortunately, too much. And so at what point are we going to have that righteous indignation that something has to be done and we, through the power and authority of Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth, we can do something about it? You see, it says no more violence. It doesn't say no to violence. There's a big difference. 
Because no more violence is what God can say. God says no more. Where there's light, there can be no darkness. And we are the light of the world. And so as we usher in and we go into places, we can say in the authority of Christ, no more violence. It's amazing to me, but a lot of people will say no to violence. They coexist with it. It's here, but I don't have it, so it's okay. It doesn't affect me, so I'm all right. But I believe that, as Jesus said in Luke 4, as he quoted Isaiah, our task is to be difference makers. Our task is to be about taking the paralyzed to Jesus. It's about taking our neighborhood to Christ. Believing without a shadow of a doubt that he can change things. I told your pastor I might do this, so I think I'm going to do this. It involves all of us. So I need two volunteers to come up. We have just enough time, I think, to do this. Don't everybody come at once. I'm not going to bite. Thank you, Derek. Very good. Okay. Here's, I got two. There comes three. Well, okay. So what we're going to do, hey, Derek, tell me your name again. Lana. Lana. And okay. I'm the crazy lady. <laughs> Uh-oh. I didn't ask for a crazy lady. <laughs> okay. So let's, here's some math. This is a math question. So I don't know. I didn't ask. <laughs> no, it's okay. We'll get people to help you. Okay. So when we think about changing the world, this is what this exercise is about, okay? When we think about changing the world, there's two things. If Let's say Derek is one that, that evangelizes one person a day for 33 years, okay? So you pull out your phone or whatever you got to do to figure out how much that is. And, uh, can I call a friend? Of course you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you have a lifeline. We'll use a lifeline. And then in your, in your case, yes, you no, this one's not a neat, well, it could be, but here. In your case, you're going to disciple one person a year for 33 years. And so the question I have for y'all is, who reaches more people, Derek or Lana? And please, it's like two plus two is? Me. You have to be very sure of your answer. So who, but please answer. You know, a lot of people don't say anything. But who, yes. Derek is evangelizing one person a day for 33 years. And Lana's going to disciple one person a year for 33 years. So the, the question is, who reaches more people? Lana. Okay, hold on. Let's look here. Derek, how many with me? How many with Derek? Oh, man. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. And how many with Lana? Oh, a little more. Okay. Good job. Because discipleship does things that maybe evangelization doesn't. But so what is the difference? So here's what we're going to do, okay? Um, we're going to say that, Lana, you and I just met today, and so we visit for a year and all that, and we talk and get to know each other, and you invite me to your birthday party, and I go, and I invite you to mine, and you meet my family, my wife, my kids, and I get to meet your family, and we, all, we have this amazing relationship, and through the relationship over a year, uh, I tell you about Christ, you accept Christ, and then, so then year two, we continue to have this friendship, but then we're going to go do the same the next second year, so you go find somebody, okay, and I'll go find somebody, and I, look, I just met Derek. Hi, Derek, how are you? It's good to see you. So you go find somebody and bring them up here, okay? So how are you? So in the second year, we get to visit and all that, and we, we encourage each other, and, and I share the plan of salvation with you, and, but, but we, we, we cry together, we rejoice together, we enjoy fellowship together, and so, so all of a sudden, it's a life thing, and, and so in year three now, now you go get somebody, okay. and I go get somebody, okay. and now... Okay, and now, hi, how are you? See, we'll, when we meet people and take time, we have time to meet. So now all of us have to go get somebody. Okay, so you go get somebody, I'll go get somebody. Hi. Can I get... How are you? What's your name? Hi, baby. Can you get up here, please? Yeah, come on up. Okay, so, so all of a sudden there's two, four, six, 
Eight. Right? Did you get another one? Oh. oh, wow, you just got excited. Okay, good. Okay, but, but so here's the question. As we see multiplication, right? It's two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32, then so on. How many people do you think Lana will have reached in 33 years? Somebody throw out a crazy number. As many as the one a day. No, no, it's a number. It's a number. For 33 years. No, because it compounds, right? There's, see, we started with two, then there's four, then there's eight, 16. Somebody have a crazy number? Huh? 10,000? No, it's not infinite. Two million? I got two million here. Anybody more? I see your, your, your mind's working. What, it, what was it? Did you have a number? 50 million. Woo! Any more? 50 million over here. No, it's not infinity. How many? <laughs> okay, how much was your number? Do you remember? If you evangelized one a year? 33 to 365. Right. It's 12,045, I think. Right? 12,045. So are we saying, obviously, the land's going to reach more, right? That was the more, most applause. But I need somebody to, to keep doing a number. So while they're thinking, let's go get somebody else, okay? Everybody go get somebody. You go get a friend, and I'll go get a friend. Everybody goes and gets somebody. Hi. What's your name? Tam, I heard, saw you playing the guitar earlier. I just want to congratulate Get on up here. Yeah, so you want to be able to play up here one day? or? Amen. That's good. Very good. So you see the idea is that we just, over 365 days, we just get to know each other and share the gospel and, and all that. And so yeah, we, that's good. So, okay, so, oh, Wow. Hey, Karan, how's it going, man? <laughs> so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Yeah, good. Okay, so the next one will be 36, and after that it's 72. Has anybody done the math? Oh, come on over here. Good job. Don't, don't say it out loud. This is if two people are discipling. No, no, it's just one. Okay, oh, okay. wow. He's, he's got a, an E in here, times E to the whatever. It's an exponential, it's an exponential rate of change. Wow. See, you're, you're smarter than me. It's an exponential to me, it's just times two, times two, times two, 33 oh, no, times. Way more, than, way more than And how many, what was your... No, it should... No. It's, it's times two, 33 times... And let me make this end it quicker than we can. We could go on and go on and write, and then all of us would be standing up here, and, and then there'd be nobody there. But do you know that it's more than the population of planet Earth? No, it's eight point something billion. <laughs> but thank you. Huh? And it's how much? Eight billion. Here we go. Hold on, hold on. Let me get it so I can read it. Because I never write, write it down. Thank you. And you're barely passing. Wow, that's real small. You got any bigger print? It's 8 billion. Listen, 8 billion, 589 million, 935 people. And, and here's, the, here's the great thing. We started with two. Right? There's a whole lot of us here. It wouldn't take 33 years. If we're willing to fly and go on a boat, go into a neighborhood, go into a stadium, go into a school, and go in the authority of Jesus Christ, we can do this. Amen. It's Amen. possible. Yes. We can do it. Thank you all very much. So, the question now is real personal, and this is between you and the Lord, but it's important to ask the question, so, where are you with this? Do you want the power and authority of Jesus Christ to flow through you? Do you want to be, a be about a life that's not an imitation, it's not a replica, it's not a copy? Are you willing to say, Jesus, you said that greater things than you have done we will do. 
And Jesus, you said that things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard are the things I've prepared for those who love me. So my question is, are you willing to say, Jesus, I want that? Lord, I want, I want to live a life that hasn't been, been seen or heard about before. Allow me to live an original. Allow me to go into places in your authority and see your presence change things. Do you want that? Because see, I think so many of us fail to do that and and what we want is for God to bless what we want to do and, and, and we want Him to bless a place where things sometimes are possible and sometimes not. And he's saying, come here. Come here and play on my playing field where everything is possible. Where the doors open because I said so. Where they write laws because I said so. Where the schools say, please come because I said so. Where the stadiums say, yes, please help us because I said so. Where homes no longer have violence, domestic violence. Where children no longer have to suffer abuse. Where teenage moms no longer get pregnant. Where these things no longer take place because we were willing to go and fight for them. We were able to allow the power and authority of Jesus Christ to flow through us. So the question is, are we willing to say, Lord, I will. I will. I will. I promise you, I didn't know what I was doing when I said yes. And and my wife is here. You can ask her. She can testify that I didn't have a clue. But she can testify that it was an expensive journey. Not in money. I'm talking about in time, commitment, things. But on November the 1st, listen to this. This is really a cool part of the story. On November the 1st, 1999, <clears throat> after arriving in Argentina in October of 96, as new missionaries, right? New missionaries go there to learn a language and so on. The telephone rang at the house, and Deborah picked it up. And you know who was on the other end? It was a secretary of president Carlos Menem of Argentina, saying, we want to meet your husband. Now, that was really cool for me because my mother-in-law had visited, and my mother-in-law and I didn't really, you know, it was mother-in-law. So, <laughs> so Deborah said, as we're driving her from the airport to the house, said, Mom, David got to meet the president-elect the new De La Rua after Miniman, and she says, I did too on television. I was like, so it was really neat when the current president called the house or his office called, right? Because I was like, (sighs) (laughs) but seriously, there's nothing that God can't do. You already know that. So that's not the difficult part of the equation. The difficult part of the equation is are we going to allow Jesus Christ to work and move in us in a way that's supernatural so that supernatural things can happen and get people can be set free from the oppression and the difficulties that they live? That's the question. My challenge is that we do that and that you will have so much joy your spirit will be so lifted because you will get to see firsthand things happen before your eyes that you would never imagined that eye has never seen and ear has never heard. So my hope is that. And so as we try to close out this service and somehow, I don't know, we'll be back. I'm so grateful to Lake Arlington to Eric and May 27th if you don't know I think there's a bulletin insert there's uh, we've never done this before but no more violence ministry is is at a point where we think that God wants to do something new and 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 bigger and so uh, to help us do more in more countries 
uh, we're having a, a dinner on May 27th here at your church. And so uh, that's what Quran was referring to earlier. And so we're going to both be back here on that evening. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and, and being together that day. But I, I believe that God wants to do so much more than we see or imagine. We can ask or imagine. And so as we close the service, I want to invite you, if you need to, to say, Lord, I'm sorry that I have not allowed your authority and power to be manifested through me. So if you need to ask the Lord to forgive you while you're there, I want to ask you to do that. And then I want to invite you to stand if you want to say, God, I want to be used by you. I want to see my neighborhood change. I want to see things happen. I want to see the schools free from violence. I want to see homes free from violence. I want to see these things change because I know our nation needs it and I know the world needs it. So as we sing and as we close out the service, I would ask sincerely that all of us renew a commitment with the Lord Jesus Christ. And always remember, start the Great Commission in verse 18, where Jesus says, all authority, all of it, is mine in heaven and on earth, and therefore go. So as we go, as each of us goes into whatever part of life, wherever place, whatever it is he's asking us to do, whether it's in school, whether it's whatever it is, that we would flow and go in his authority. If you need to make a commitment today, there'll be ministers here, please come and and do that, and as we close, let me pray for us. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, God, for this church and for the love they have for the world, for its people. God, may we be able to go out in your authority, to see things change before our eyes, not because we did much, but we just showed up. But it was your presence and your authority, your power that made things change. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we thank you that you do have all the authority and it's in you and through you that we can live an original life. Thank you for the faith that you give us in your authority. Help us to put it into action so that we can see the influence cause transformation. We love you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.